Boeing shrugged off some potential bad news after yesterday's earnings report, trading higher intraday before settling slightly lower. That stock is one of our next guest squawk picks, and he's uh, uh, joining us now, uh, David Bonson, founder and CIO of the Bonson Group. Uh, David, what do you have to assume right now uh, to back Boeing at these price levels in terms of the ultimate impact of, uh, of the whole 737 issue? Yeah, I mean, if the 737 MAX issue were to be kind of the worst case scenario that you hear people talking about, not from the company, but even just sort of negative analyst, it still doesn't really bring the price much below 350, just on a on a valuation off a of free cash flow, which is really the only way you can can uh, value Boeing at this point. It, I thought it was very telling that they suspend the stock buybacks. They're not touching the dividend. They're not going to touch the dividend. And this has been, first of all, it's the second biggest free cash flow generator in the market, and it has been one of the great dividend growers in history. 14% per year for 20 years they've grown the dividend. So to me, the free cash flow generation, they have to get over this hump. Worst case, we think, is about six months delay impacting 5%. It's reasonably priced in. And I've never seen a drama get this kind of attention. And the stock is up 15% year to date. It's just stunning to me. Sure. No, obviously, the, the, the financials people are, uh, are able to get some comfort there. Uh, Chevron, another pick, another company uh, yeah. in the news for, for different reasons, potentially having to pay more for this uh, acquisition of Anadarko. Yeah, and there's no question that Chevron's a bit more cyclical of a company around energy prices. You're always going to have some correlation there. But again, you're talking about a company that's grown their dividend 33 years. This is obviously a theme of ours. We're dividend growth investors. And in Chevron's case, I don't believe they are going to have to raise the bid for Anadarko. I think it Why? is a no brainer that Anadarko would take this bid at 65 as a better bid than 76 for Moxie based on the post deal leverage. Hmm. The fact of the matter is that after they absorb the 18 billion of debt from Anadarko, they're going to come out with a debt to EBITDA ratio that is below Exxon's now. The post deal leverage Anadarko Oxy would, would make it one of the more levered companies that's, in the entire space. That's nuanced and, and trying to tell that to shareholders that we're taking the lower deal and it's better for you. Maybe a little nuanced. It, it may be. I, don't, I, I think it isn't nuanced for those shareholders who are going to actually represent we the We want math. more. Yeah. Right, right. But also because of done, the ratio to stock price, we've Fox seen this a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Exactly. 50% in stock the by the time Mur Oxy Murdoch's stock settles, I think that the 65 will be a higher price anyways. Why is Chevron stock and their ratio? a more stable pricing mechanism to Anadarko shareholders because Chevron is that much more stable of a company. Blackstone, want to get to that. Obviously changing from a partnership structure to a, a corporate structure. What happens to the dividend of that? Because they no longer have to pay out most of their profits, right? Uh, they no longer have to in terms of the LP structure going away, but it's the kind of uh, culture of the company. They're big cash flow generators. They don't have a lot of balance sheet assets. They're asset managers, right? So uh, really all of their business is cash flow. They can redistribute it out in a very tax-efficient way, and they will. And again, that stock can't yet even get the full pricing because the investors that will come in mechanically can't until after July. KKR got a 25% pr premium in valuation. Blackstone so far has gotten about 10%. There's more to go there. Quickly, 3M has raised its dividend 61 years in a row. Yes. Would you buy it here? We would not. And the reason is just purely because it's so priced into 3M for 61 years, it's not a high enough dividend to wet our beak. But 3M is a great company. They always kind of move through these various cyclical challenges. But 3M for us is the type of company we like, but it's just not a company we buy because of the level of dividend income. David, thank yeah. you very much, David Bonson.